Hi everyone and welcome to Hyperbaric, to our headquarters located in north of Spain. This is Alex Blanco and I'm the commercial director at Hyperbaric. In the next few minutes we will learn about hot isostatic brushing technology, commonly called HIP technology. First of all, you should know that Hyperbaric is the world leader company specialized in industrial equipment for the high pressure technologies. We design, manufacture and marketing HIP presses, use it for critical industrial components, focus on the aerospace, energy, oil and gas, automotive or medical implant sectors. Hot hydrostatic pressure is a post-processing technology that consists of applying high levels of pressure and temperature to a wide range of metallic or ceramic materials. It allows parts to be developed that reach the quality standards required by sectors interested in manufacturing precision components to be subjected to extreme working conditions. Also, this post-processing technology is becoming a key factor for high for performance additive manufacturing components. We had an excellent speaker to talk to us about all of this. It's Ruben Garcia, R&D project manager at Hyperbaric. Ruben is an experienced mechanical engineer with a PhD on high pressure technologies, and he joined Hyperbaric in 2003 after an internship in an aircraft company in the US. He has been carrying out different roles in the quality and engineering departments in the Spanish company. He's currently the R&D project manager who is leading HIP technology in Hyperbaric. Ruben designs with his team HIP presses that and he participates to AM and HIP R&D projects with academic and industrial partners. In addition, he is co-author of two patents. Hi Ruben, you can start your talk at any time. Hi everyone and thanks Alex for the introduction. Today we're going to talk about hot isostatic pressing and its role as a post-process in additive manufacturing. We have broken down this presentation into three many different sections. In the first one, we are going to introduce HIP, its application, and what can this process do to improve the properties of additive manufactured parts. Then we are going to move on HIP trends, how the technology has evolved, and the new opportunities for treatment of AM parts. And finally, we will present hyperbaric technology and our HIP Innovation Center. So, without further ado, let's move on the first part, basic uh, principles of HIP. Alex has already introduced HIP technology as a heat treatment which is carried out under high pressure atmosphere. Typically, this pressure is applied using an inner gas, which is most, most of the time is argon, but some other gases may be used. The combination of high temperature plus high pressure densifies powders and solid parts, reducing the number of internal defects. So HIP is a key process for those applications requiring a reliable material. There are examples of HIPED components in different sectors, such as the uh, automotive industry, aerospace, oil and gas, and energy, and ultimately all sectors with demanding applications. Uh, in the next slide, we can see some of the manufacturing techniques that uh, may be supported by HIP. One of the most popular applications for HIP is the elimination of shrinkage cavities in castings. For example, some of the turbine, turbine blades uh, that we can see on aircraft gas uh, turbines are produced using the investment casting technique, and these are HIP in order to eliminate uh, porosity. This porosity reduction is also one of the reasons why HIP is used also for parts obtained by metal injection molding. Another application is the sintering of metallic powder to produce alloys that are not possible to obtain using conventional processes, such as sinter hard alloys, high speed steels, super alloys, and so on. To sinter these materials, um, a canister is manufactured with uh, sometimes with a uh, geometry close to the final part. This technique is known as the near net safe uh, technique. And another use of uh, HIP is the diffusion bonding of the similar materials. In fact, hot isostatic press was born uh, in order to bond the similar materials for nuclear application. And finally, uh, we have the application for additive manufacturing for which we are going to talk now. What are the benefits of HIP for additive manufacturing components? Well, although printing methods has evolved quite a lot, 
parts are not 100% free of defects. And sometimes uh, we can find defects uh, such as porosity, lack of fusion, loose powder, and so on. Once these parts are heated, all the internal defects, uh, so to speak, are, are erased, as you can see here in this uh, micrograph from the Ramayet Institute of Technology. After heat, we get improvement on material mechanical properties especially in, in the fatigue behavior, as we are going to see later. But also ductility can be improved, tensile properties. And one important effect is that we are able to reduce the anisotropy of some of the powder bed fusion techniques due to the recrystallization after heat. In the end, what we get is a more reliable and predictable material. Here you have some examples of the AM uh, heated parts. Uh, done by our partner INU. Here uh, you have an aerospace fixture that is um, used uh, to improve the fatigue properties. In fact, heaping is almost enforced for all AM structural parts in the aerospace sector. Another sector requiring heap is the medical. And here you can see, for example, a heaping plant and a spinal cage and a titanium cap. Another application of HIP is uh, improving thermal conductivity of some AM parts, such as the pure copper inductor that you can see over here. Here you have an example on, of how HIP can influence in the fatigue properties of a printed alloy. We have carried out a comparative study with the Burgos University and the Donnell Foundation on a titanium alloy to assess the fatigue properties of printed specimens and printed plus heated specimens. The graph uh, shows the fatigue curve for the reference material, is the red one. And as you can see, the fatigue curve for the as printed specimen is noticeable worse, as you can see in the dark, dark blue curve. This fatigue reduction is caused by the existence of uh, internal defects that triggers fatigue propagation, as can be seen in this micrograph. In both reference and heaped material, uh, cracks are initiated uh, in the surface, but in the as print material, these cracks are initiated in the internal volume of the specimen. The fatigue life is related to the size and shape of the defect, and that uh, it may vary quite a lot. So that's the reason why we have an increase in the scatter of the fatigue life in the as printed condition. Finally, the light blue shows uh, the results for the heated conditions. And here you can see that the results are similar to the reference material. So in the end, thanks to heaping, we get a material which is similar to the, to the reference one without uh, any kind of uh, fatigue um, problems. Now it's time to talk about the heap trends and the new opportunities that have arose for additive manufacturing. As we said, the uh, heap is uh, not new technology. In fact, it was born in the 50s. And during the last year, we've seen how the presses uh, have evolved, uh, setting a higher standard for the operating pressure. In fact, uh, most of the presses installed nowadays uh, have an operating pressure of uh, around 1,000 bar, which is uh, 15,000 PSI. But now the standard for the new ones are 2,000 bar. As heaping is a combination of pressure and temperature, an increase in pressure permits a colder treatment with some benefits from a metallurgical point of view. Another benefit is that argon is denser at this pressure, increasing its cooling capability and allowing faster temperature drops. What can we do with faster cooling rates? Well, at the beginning, presses were naturally cooled, and this uh, cooling stage could take uh, more than nine hours, so a complete heap cycle could take uh, one day. In order to improve conductivity, produ productivity, sorry, Faster cooling presses were developed, reaching the speeds about 200, 400 uh, Celsius degrees per minute. This feature not only increased productivity, but also limits grain growth uh, as the time at high temperature is reduced. Next evolution is about trying to reach such, such cooling rates 
that opens the possibility of carrying out the heat treatments inside of the heat press. In these graphs, you can see what it takes to produce a heat treated part using a conventional route. First, we need to perform a stress relief. Then we have to do the heat in itself. Then we have to introduce in another furnace to, to perform quench it or solution treatment. And finally, we will introduce in yet another uh, furnace to do the aging and tempering. With a heat press fast enough, we could perform all the treatments in one shot. And this is, um, improves lead time and also uh, energy efficiency of the overall process. One of the most important opportunities that can be found when considering uh, HIP is um, considering HIP plus printing as an overall process. For instance, productivity can be boosted by changing printing parameters such as the hatching space, scanning space, or layer thickness. These parameters can be tailored in order to maximize productivity, even though uh, we know that this is going to affect to part density and quality. But if the part is to be heated, uh, all these quality issues are going to be erased. And the outcome of the whole process is going to be a reduction of the, of the lead time while maintaining part quality. So basically, if we take into account the overall process to get an AM part, including all post processes, we can optimize parameters of the printing stage to improve productivity. There is yet another approach to boost, uh, to boost um, printing productivity, consisting of printing only the cell of the parts and leaving the internal volume full of loose powder. This is sort of an evolution of the near net safe technology that we have previously seen. But instead of building a canister welding some plates, this canister is built using additive manufacturing. This approach uh, can improve productivity but expected construction, contraction are not negligible at all. So it is important to counter design part geometry so that at the end of the process, uh, we have the desired geometry. Although pressure is iso isostatic, contraction are not the same in all directions. So a specific software must be used to predict this construction. In the following pictures, uh, you can see uh, a cube whose cell was printed uh, with uh, SLM equipment and then hit it. As you can see, contraction are noticeable. At Hyperbaric, uh, we have two application projects going on in collaboration with the Thay Technology Center. The first one is what we have called CombiFit. And the goal is to combine different heat treatments in one single heat cycle. In order to be able to carry out this kind of treatment, uh, we have designed our 20 heap unit that will, that will reach uh, cooling rates uh, well over 1000 degrees per minute. We have already explained the potential of this kind of treatment in terms of lead time, capital cost, and metallurgical properties. The other pro project is named Sinterheap, and it's aimed to process uh, either metal injection molding or binder jetting parts. The idea is also, is also to be able to do the sintering and heat treatment in the same equipment. We have decided to focus on research, on our research on a copper chromium zirconium alloy, taking into account the potential of this kind of material in the electric mobility sectors. And the motivation is the same, get a top quality part, redu reducing its lead time and increasing the overall energy efficiency of the whole process. Now we're moving on the last part where we are going to introduce you our technology and our HIP Innovation Center. All our HIP equipment features our proprietary wire winding technology, uh, which is a vessel construction technique consisting of uh, layering a high strength wire on a cylinder in order to introduce residual stresses. This technique provides safer design as they meet the leak before break mode of failure a more reliable design as the residual stresses help to extend cyclic life and also a more efficient design because with a multi-layer vessel it is possible to channel the cooling fluid near the inner surface improving vessel cooling capability all our model reach uh, 2000 bar 
As an option, we have a molybdenum furnace for temperatures up to 1,400 degrees or a graphite furnace for temperatures up to 2,000 degrees. All our uh, units uh, uh, feature fast cooling and ultra fast cooling is an option to perform heat treatment within the press. Here you have uh, our portfolio. The smaller machine is the Hyperbike 20 hip, which uh, has a hot zone of 200 uh, millimeter in diameter by 500 millimeter. Then we have the Hyperbike uh, 30 hip, which uh, has a 300 uh, millimeter inner diameter, uh, hot zone diameter by 1000 millimeter. And then we have the 42 hip, which has an inner diameter of 420 by 1,250 millimeter in height. Finally, at Hyperbaric, we have a hip innovation center, which is open for those companies willing to explore uh, hip benefits in their application. We are already working with some R&D centers, university, and companies producing additive manufacturing parts. There we have a 38 hip with a molybdenum furnace and a hot zone of 380 millimeter in diameter and fast cooling, which is at your disposal. So uh, here you have our contact information. We are in our headquarters in Burgos, Spain, a nice place to visit. And you can reach us at the number and email on your screen. So uh, that's all. Thanks for your attention, and I think that we can wrap it up here, Alex. Thank you, Ruben. Very interesting your presentation. As Ruben has commented, Hyperbaric has recently opened the first hip innovation center in southern Europe, in the north of Spain, where R&D projects and trials can be carried out on its facilities. It is currently working with some IM actor, actors uh, to develop new applications. Uh, and for more information about our hip technology or our hip innovation center, please visit our website, hyperbaric.com, and feel free to contact us. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.